Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your boy, Iceman and Bob, Tech and Gaming. In the world of video game coverage, everyone is covering the latest and greatest video games. In this particular video, we're going to cover a game that has been out for some time, but due to server issues, as well as several other logistics, it has led to people abandoning both the game as well as the community itself. What game am I referring to? It is Aliens Fire Team Elite. This game is available on multiple platforms, including Xbox, PC, and PlayStation. That does include PS4 as well as PS5. So you will find a cross-play functionality built into it. Rest assured, if you ever experience matchmaking or you plan on jumping into this game for the first time, you will play with players from respective platforms. I'm going to answer in this video whether this game is worth getting into for the first time if you've never played it, as well as for those of you that were previously a member of the community, whether you should jump back in it or not. The name of the update, which many of us in the community call an out of the blue surprise update, is called Quality of Life Patch. You will find in the file name, it has some version of 10.2023 in it. Again, it depends on your platform, so it might look differently, but you're going to find at least that part in it. What it does is it essentially does just that. I don't want to sound redundant, but it literally addresses the quality of life in terms of playing this game. You're going to find a lot of the bugs have been fixed. You're going to find improvements to matchmaking, and especially when it comes to alpha and beta, for those of you that don't know, those are the synthetic androids that can join you if you solo a mission. They now actually perform more intelligently. They actually do have friendly fire, for those of you that don't know. They're smarter when it comes to reviving, healing, and just the overall engagement. So we're going to go through, talk about these updates. And one good thing, the company has been listening to the feedback in the community. Not only did they issue this update, but they did let us know about some new potential game or games to come in the future. So I'm going to show a lot of this information on the screen as I'm talking and as you're watching the game. Feel free to pause and read this and take a look at this on your own time scale. Nonetheless, I'm going to go through for those of you that are unable to do just that what the quality of life updates are so the first thing you're going to find as i mentioned earlier it's updates to the matchmaking it fixes the host errors disconnects queue issues cross play crashes and more one of the things that caused many people to leave this game was matchmaking if you don't have friends to play with if you're not on the forums and and going around and have a connection when you would join with people you could be three-fourths of the way with the game with the particular mission you could be right at the end and you're about to slay the boss right right at that point in time all of a sudden the server just disconnects and you're kicked back to orbit it really has been an issue that caused many people to just raise quit other people you would play with they would actually get dropped out maybe they would rage quit you never really know what reasons caused them to leave but in any case when they would leave it would cause the whole game to just pretty much end and that's not good for you so they fixed that they have allowed people to come in if someone were to drop out as well as alpha and beta at the very least to come in to assist you if that were to happen it's a very much needed fix you will also find another patch is all game modes have now been added to quick play quick play was perhaps the most popular option for people to play the game it allows you to just randomly jump into one of the story missions or horde modes or what have you. And now all of those modes are in the quick play option. You're also going to find an added additional logs and analytics available to you. You're going to find these updates regarding the synthetic androids, alpha and beta. They have improved offensive capabilities. Some people will say offensive, offensive. I wanted to say it both ways just to make sure you're paying attention in the video. 
They also have improved defensive capabilities, improved support capabilities, adjusted scaling and healing for difficulties. So now they are actually relevant, as I mentioned, and as you'll see in some of this footage, on the harder difficulties, including all the way up to insane. They have adjusted behavior when reviving players, adjusted behavior relating to fire paths and friendly fire. Let me just mention right off the bat that they will shoot you in the back. However, what I've noticed is that even on Insane, the hardest difficulty, their friendly fire damage is far less than an actual player. So please keep that in mind. You may get shot. You just move out of the way. They take very little power away from your energy bar, your health bar. But however, they do engage in friendly fire. So keep that in mind. They also have an adjusted sleep mode parameters. It, it leaves alpha and beta in an at least state of minimal engagement at all and appropriate time so there were times in the past where alpha and beta wouldn't do anything at least now they engage at all times so you're going to find some other bug fixes essentially the lancer loadout in horde slayer skin is retroactively granted to players who have already beaten a horde mode on extreme you will find a fixed and rare bug that caused game fails when connecting to epic servers. They have fixed a missing SFX bug related to the HEL. They have fixed an exploit in the Cathedral Bridge. They have also fixed a bug on Lakasi Tower that prevented players from purchasing additional consumables. They have also fixed bugs relating to the following challenge cards and perks. You will find by the lowest bidder, slow but sure, stuck magazines, expendable crew, threat neutralized, chain reaction, and sidearm expertise. They have also fixed a bug related to players stumbling. This was a big annoyance to me. I'm pretty sure many of you as well. All of a sudden, you just bump past with players. Now, they do have a challenge card that does involve stumbling but when you're not using that challenge card you don't want to just be knocked down by your teammate so anyway they fixed that bug they also fixed a bug causing the perk guard dog and that's for the recon class all right to not deal appropriate damage guard dog was supposed to do some serious damage and oftentimes you would use it and it just would not deal what it's supposed to deal so i'm glad they fixed that i'm often a support character i can play all loadouts and so especially for me that's a biggie right fixed a bug that prevented warriors being highlighted by the t22 e4 sar goat ha in enhance large optic okay if you play the game you'll be familiar with what i'm referring to again you can look at the particular notes that i put up on the screen regarding these patches if you want to come back and refer to it i just want to speak it out to you all in the video just in case you're unable to see it at this particular time you're going to find a bug that has been fixed that caused the anesthesiologist perk which is with the doctor loadout to grant 20 percent temporary health Again, it was just a lot of bugs that didn't perform the way that they should. And it could be a make it or break it situation, especially in the harder difficulties. They also fixed a bug that caused an animation and SFX errors with the EDS 93 Zadak. OK, there's a certain times where certain things you have sound effects with gunfire and other things just being locked it, it was just so annoying it was a hot mess to say the least so we're so glad that they fixed this they've also fixed a bug that caused the gunners okay for those of you that play as gunners they're a very popular loadout the gunners grenade to not be visible after you emote it right that was a big issue because if you drop the grenade too close it will do damage and it will not hit its intended target. So you need to be able to keep eyes on that. They fixed that. They've also fixed a bug that allowed the player to exploit character movements. They fixed another bug that has called client crashes when players accept invites from hardcore players. All right. They have a hardcore mode. After you go through the story, you beat everything. You have a mode where essentially you create a character. Once that character dies, that's it. You're done. You have to start over with an entirely new character. All right. Jump in. If you're not familiar with the game, you'll see what I mean. For those of you that are familiar, you know exactly what I mean. 
They've also fixed a bug that caused malfunctions with the OCAP-91 Vulcan while using the Lancer kit. They fixed a bug causing lifetime stats to appear negative if the number cat is ex exceeded. Okay, all of these things are getting a quality of life. They also fixed a bug that prevented the requisition store from working consistently across all horde modes. For those of you that don't know and have never played horde mode, you get to certain spots where you essentially set up shop and try to deal with all the Xenos and all the enemies. You have a point in time where you can actually go into the requisition store and buy whatever consumables that you need to help you during that particular match. Well, it wasn't working across all the horde modes so they fixed that bug and finally they fixed the bug that caused alpha and beta to continuously fire even after being knocked down so this is really great you also can go to aliensfireteamelite.com you will see this information there but again i have listed it here on the screen as well as told you all so with all of this being said I actually believe that this is a game now that it has been polished that many of you can jump back in it makes it fun again it makes it more playable it seems almost as if there's a new dynamic to the game many of you will just have to play it again to see what I mean and for those of you that are new you're going to really like it it's so much more polished and it has been perfected and even though this is an older game you always have to keep this in mind. Anytime a particular creator studio or the company that owns the game, sometimes they change guard, et cetera, et cetera, things happen. But in any case, when they address these issues, that's always a win for the community. So I absolutely recommend many of you to play this game again for those of you that have not played this game, or should I say, whether you played this game or not, please jump back in. It's definitely a welcome addition. And if you would like to play this game with me and you're new, I'm more than happy to take you through all the difficulties with any loadout, as well as those of you that are in the community and you need help with the particular mission. I beat all the missions. So on every difficulty, I'm willing to do that. All right. What is my PSN ID? It is my same name here, Iceman underscore and underscore Bob. Just message me, let me know you want to play, and hey, we'll we'll make it happen. I do play on Xbox, but I don't play it enough, so I'm not going to actually really include any of that information. So mainly you'll see me on PlayStation. With that being said, I highly recommend this game for you to jump back in or play for the first time. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed, I kindly ask that you do so. Thank you very much for that. Make sure you get the likes up, hit the notification bell. I will have more videos out. I generally do coverage with TVs. I am an enthusiast calibrator, so I calibrate television sets and talk about which TV is best for you, depending on your use case. It all varies. Just because one TV may be the king of TVs. Hello, Sony A95L. I'm referring to 2023 or the A95K from Sony last year in 2022. It may not be the best TV for you. Just depends on your use case. So feel free to message me about that in the comment section as well. I plan to have some live streams go live and just chop it up with y'all and just talk and answer questions and let it do what it do. Y'all know how that works. So once again, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Get the likes up. Make sure you hit the notification bell. Thank you for that. If there's certain games you would like for me to talk about and cover, I will do my best to do that as well. With that being said, let me get out of here, let you enjoy this footage. Again, I'm going to show this footage for the rest of the video. For those of you that have never seen this game before, maybe this will pique your interest on whether you should get into it or come back to it. On that note, as I always say, until we stream again. There's one Xeno that I keep seeing it. Vibration, uh, whatever, they'll come. Be ready. Locks are dropping. I hope you can. Good luck. They're coming. Check this out. 
job. Sentry deployed. Sentry deployed. Sentry deployed. Coming there. Sentry deployed. Somebody take the gear. Catching up. Maybe we got him demoralized. It's over. Oh, God. Eight kids here. Finally. My board's clear. Collect our man. Ah, fuck. He ain't got a pressure suit. Stand by, fire team. New plan coming. Co, let's talk. So much Wayland shit. What were they doing down here? Honaker didn't say there was a facility out here, just Pala Station itself. Movement! Watch the walls! Look at this.
Wasted. 